Well, this is what I'm working on today. I have a bunch of springs and I still have loads out there on a bed. So I'm going to use another spring and I'm going to make a sunflower and I'm trying to figure out which center I want to do the black or this because I want to put a crow on it but I have a problem with my crow let me show you I'm keeping it real guys anyways I took the crow and I traced it out even with these right here that I'm going to tell you what I done I traced it out larger than my pattern. Well, as you can see, I have another one cut out, and I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, put it on a tight stitch, and go all the way around it and try turning it. Because when I tried hot gluing them, this one was a little smaller, so I made another pattern, made it bigger. Uh, hot gluing just doesn't. It just, for me, it's, this was a pain. you got to get down to a little tail and... It went wonky on me and the beak. Yeah, so much for that. So I cut out another pattern. Now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it up and see if I can get it stuffed to where it looks like a crow because I want my flower to sit on here and my crow up here. Am I out of frame? Yeah. Anyways, I want it to kinda sit on there. You'll see when I get ready. And get it all put together but that's my idea not my idea I see things on Pinterest and I take stuff and I do it so not always just like theirs but it gives me inspiration to do this and I I'm not a lot of things you can do with the bed spring so now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew it up and try to get it turned inside out and stuff it. Sewing was a hundred times easier. I just sewed that right up. Well, let me back up. I had to come cut another one because I sewed it right up and I didn't leave a space for my... I was just sewing along there and I didn't leave a space on the belly to stuff it. So, and I had my uh, stitch small. I tried to uh, use my seam ripper and it didn't work. I thought, no, it's just a lot easier. Just cut another one out and re-sew it. Took me like a, a minute to cut it out and I went back in and I remembered to leave a space here to stuff it. And it looks way better than hot gluing. I mean, that was a mess. So. I just took my time and went around it. It wasn't any major sewings, just a seam. If you get to where you got a curve, just stop a little bit and lift your presser foot up and go around it, you know. Well, kind of turn your material and put it back down. But anyways, I'm not here to tell you how to sew because I don't know how to sew that well. But I can tell you this works a lot better with sewing machine than it did hot glue. Those are pitiful looking. All right, I'm going to get my stuffing out. And I'll stuff it, and then I'll turn this and hand stitch that shut. When I, and I'll show you when I'm finished with it. All right, I have it stuffed now. And I'll just put these edges together. And I'll just do a hand stitch and close up the belly. And that was easy. That was not hard at all when I sewed it. Just take it from me. Try to sew. But I forgot to tell you where I got the pattern. I got it off Etsy, and if I can find it, go through my Etsy files and find who I got it from, I'll leave it down below. But I did resize it in my Silhouette Studio because I think it was bigger. It come with some flowers or something, I can't remember. But I'll find it and link it down below, and that's the pattern I used for my crow. All right, I have my uh, crow stuffed. Turned out pretty good. And now I've decided I'm going to go with the black, even though he's black for the middle. But I'm just going to take my, some black thread and do a, a stitch all the way around. And I'll stop and leave a space for my stuffing. I'll stuff it and then I'll uh, stitch it shut. And then I'll cut. Well, I'll come back and kind of show you a little bit of it. I'm not going to go through the whole process. Like I said, I have a video I'll link below on making these 
easy, easy flowers. And I also, I forgot to say how I got the size of my circle. I just took a saucer. No, wait. The saucer was just a little bit too big. I had a bowl that I just turned over and traced around it. And then I had a little, uh, another little glass, clear glass bowl. And that's what I used, traced around it for the center. And I cut two of these, of the large round. And you can see I'm just doing a running stitch all the way around. Okay, I've sewed it up all the way around, and now I'm just uh, stuffing the flower in the center. And then I'll, when I get finished stuffing it, I'll just close that up. Okay, I have it closed up, and now I'll just... I need to get my material scissors. That's not working. I'll just uh, cut the little petals about an inch apart towards the center. And then on the piece down here, I'll get right in between the petals. And I'll do that all the way around on the top and right in between the petals on the one, on the piece of material on the bottom. Okay, I'm just putting a little bit of this. The color is Golden Sunset by Apple Barrel. It's gonna paint his nose set him aside and let this dry because I want to take my the cinnamon and uh, instant coffee mixture and put it all over the flower and the crow. And on the flower, I'll use my heat gun to kind of dry it and crunch it. Just gives it some rippling and I don't know, it just works, looks better. <clears throat> I've tried putting it in the oven and letting it dry. It just doesn't get that crinkly effect like it does when I'm drying it and kind of crunching it. it. Takes a little bit, but it turns out really cute. I'm going to finish this up and set it aside and let it dry. And when it dries, then I'm going to coat this coffee stuff on both of them and take care of that. But I want to come back and show you I was painting the beak. All right, I've put a coat of the uh, coffee, instant coffee, water, and cinnamon mixture on my crow and my flower. And now I'm just going to use my heat gun and dry around on my flower and try to wrinkle it up and stuff and give it a little oomph, um, a little texture. Okay, you can kind of see how the how it fluffs up and they're not all going the same way. I like the way that looks. And it's still a little wet through here and back here, but I'm just gonna lay it aside and let it dry. I like the curled up crunchy look. Now, if you don't want that, you don't have to do that. And my crow's still wet, so I'm gonna set him aside and let these dry. Well, my flower's dry, my crow's dry, and I have a box of tags here that I got oh, a week or two ago at the thrift store. It's the only thing I found for weeks. Well, I haven't really been out, but this one time I went to two different places when we went out of town, and I got this for $2.99, this whole box. So, I might as well use them. So, I made a little tra tag. And I just put some watered down antique and wax on it. Tell, got it all over my hands. And wrote crow on it and crumpled it up. And somehow I'm gonna tie that on there. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna decorate it and what I'm gonna put on it to make it look cute. But that's where I'm at now. All right, I have it finished. What I done is just put a little Rusty Star hanging out of his mouth with some jute and some uh, Spanish moss with a little greenery in it. Made a messy bow and some more greenery and attached my little crow tag. And that's how it turned out. Well, 
Well, what I'm working on now is going to be a cow. And if you remember the, uh, I don't remember, was it the last video or the one before that? Anyways, I made the little sheep out of a two by four, piece of two by four. And my friend Sheila, she said, now make one with a cow. So I thought, oh, that's a good idea. I'll try it. We'll see how it looks. So I did go on Etsy and I found a pattern. And I don't mind buying patterns because I'll store them back on my computer and I'll reuse them. And what I did is this one was made for like a glow forge or something. You know, the cutters that cut out the thin, the thin wood. And she had the whole pattern. Well, all I needed was the head. That's it. So I brought it into my Silhouette software and I broke it apart, resized what I thought I needed and just used the head. And now I've drawn it off on some thin quarter inch wood. And I went and got me a two before. And I did, I go, I went ahead and done like the, here the, uh, this'll be the here. And then that's the little part that goes up here. Um, I'm not sure I'll actually use those with maybe they'll look too thick or what, but I'm gonna try to cut them out. And I was gonna use the full-size Jenga blocks because see, on the this one here, I just cut them in half. I had two Jenga blocks and cut in half and that made the four legs. Well, all I have on my Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree, I only have three of them. So I'm gonna have to try to make some legs myself. So I went and found a little scrap piece of wood like this. And actually it's the same thickness as the Jenga block. So I'm gonna have to cut it down here and then cut it up and to make the legs for my cow. But now I'm gonna go out to the garage and get on my scroll saw and cut all this out. We're gonna see how this looks, Sheila. It's your idea now. Well, I got all my pieces cut out, ready to go. Now all I gotta do is paint. And I mixed up for the nose, oops. I mixed a little bit of the Acrylic Fresh by Delta, Flesh, I mean, <laughs> and Peach Cobbler by Folk Art, and a Creamy Peach by Apple Barrel, because to me this was too pink, this was too orangish pink, and this was too brown. So, I just mixed up a little dab in a cup because I don't need much to do the nose and I'll use that on the inside of the ears. Um, I'll probably just paint the face white, do black on this. And then like I said, the inside of the ears will be this fleshy color and I'll take a probably a Sharpie and do some little stuff to it. And the legs, I think what I'll do with those is paint them white, except for maybe on the hooves. And maybe put a little, take a little dab of black here and there. I don't know. And I don't know until I start painting. And then I'll paint this white and then put some black spots on it. And then put it together and we'll see how it looks. But it's, it's more of a, a primitive cow. It's not like a, not everybody would like it, but it's gonna be a primitive cow. I like primitive, so Sheila gave me this idea when I done the sheep, she said do a primitive cow, so I'm doing it. Now I'm gonna start painting, because it's not going to take me long. It's gonna be a flat white, flat white, and this would be black, and you know, you see the, you get it. So I don't see, I'll come back here and there and kind of show you where I'm at, but I don't see any sense in you watching me paint this all white and all that. So I'll be back, back and forth to show you what I'm doing. Okay, I've got all the basic colors done, finished. And there's my legs. What I'm going to, what I done is I took a pen, pencil and just kind of drew on some spots where I thought they might look good with the head. So I even done some on here. And then right here, I'm gonna put pink or the, probably this uh, creamy peach there. 
I don't know, that's pretty close to that. Well, anyways, I'll try it. If it don't work, I'll use something else. But right now, I'm going to get my black and just start making the spots. on my cow. And I'm not following my pencil mark just perfect. I'm just putting it in there. I'll have to go over them a little bit after they dry. Okay, that's how I'm going to do those. Might make that one just a little bit. Now, let me see. Kind of got to put, nah. Well, I think it needs to be just a little bit bigger. Just a little. That's good. I'll let those dry and then just kind of fill it in a little more. I got the ones here on the face. No rhyme or reason. I just took a pencil and started drawing in some. I want that a little more rounded. Oh, a little one right there. Right there. Okay, because I'll fill this in with pink, and then his little nose will be on here. And I'll, oh, I have black on my hand. I'll fill it, put a little pink there, and then put some nostrils and do his eyes. Put some pink here. And I'll kind of show it as I go, what I'm doing. Right now I'm going to have to fix my boo-boo because I have black on my hand. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I took just a little bit of the uh, creamy peach and put it right there. And now for my, I'm gonna probably just go around it a little bit with a Sharpie. And then on the nostrils, I put just a little dab of that color there. And I'm trying to think, probably just make a little swirl. Eh, it's all right. 
Now, for my eyes, and I think I'll go around that with a little bit of this too. Okay, that's good. Am I in frame? Now, for my eyes, I'm gonna just use a dot. I just, I have this off of a flag as a piece of plastic. Oh, I got a little off. Okay. He's gonna be goggle-eyed. I went down too far. Okay, when that dries, I will put a white in it. And I'm pretty sure, you know, a little dot of white. That'll look better. And then I'll make him some little eyebrows. kind of go around here. That probably won't show as much down here. Okay, and then I did sand off the little top for here. Let's see, how's that? I think it goes like that. I'll be putting that, gluing that on there, and this right in there, and put little dots for the eyes, and then I'll start gluing it all together and then for the little hooves I just did this on the bottom might have went a little thicker but I'll put them off it doesn't look right I'll correct them I think that's going to be okay all right that's where I'm at now and I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'm going to start putting this together and what I'll use is hot glue and then some of this uh Super glue from the Dollar Tree. And, oh, yeah. Also, have to add some stuff. He needs a tail. Okay, I have ideas. Oh, his star. I don't know if I'm going to use that star or find just a rusty star I already have. Because I think I made that one too big. Or not even put the star on it. I don't know. We'll see what I end up with. All right, I'm gonna let this dry because I don't want to hit that eye and smear it and mess it all up. All right, I'm down to putting the finishing, finishing touches on him. I've got to dot his eyes, that's dry now. Okay, that helped. And then I put a jute, thicker jute on his tail. I painted it black. And I've got a little cowbell here. I put a bow on it so it would have something to hang from. Gotta figure out how, where to put it.
can't. Okay. Right up under his chin, about right there. All right. Where's my glue gun? And if it's off, good, it's still on. Okay, had a little cowbell. I probably need to trim that. Okay, he's pretty much finished. I don't know of anything else to add to it. I don't know whether I need to add the star. Wished I had made that star just a little bit smaller. I don't know. I'm going to work with it. Because I think it needs something. So I'm going to either put this one on there rusty it up or put a rusty one on there or just put that on there. I don't know. So hang on. I'm going to figure it out and I'll be back and show you what I did. Well, here's the cow all finished. I did put a few more spots on it and then clear waxed it and went over with some dark wax. And I wished I had remembered to distress my cow, but I totally forgot. But for scraps of wood and a little piece of two before. I think he turned out pretty cu cute. I've had several questions about the vinegar and uh, steel wool and I did a video on it and I made a jar of it and I didn't think it was not going to work because that's all I did with this one was put some steel wool and some vinegar and sealed it up and left it. And it only took about two weeks to really start turning. So I made a video, I done the same thing with this one. And this has probably been over two months. And this looks about like the color of tea. And this is dark like coffee and this looks like tea. I went ahead and took the uh, steel wool out of it filtered all the steel wool out of the vinegar because it would just sit there and sit there and sit there and I really don't know um, I know when I looked it up online it said to use the zero 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 I believe or maybe four zeros three zeros it's a really fine um, steel wool and mine was not in this it was not this one I don't know what I put in it I had some steel wool I just stuffed it in there that might have been the difference this is some steel wool. I put steel wool in there that I had bought at the thrift store, a package of it, but it was a, a coarse grade of steel wool. So when I make it back to town, I'm gonna to try to remember to get the uh, finest grade of steel wool, and I'm gonna try it again. But I thought, well, I'll take a piece of wood and just see what this does. I'll put a little bit here on this, a little bit of this and a little bit of this, we'll see the difference. Of course, this is already naturally old, but I'm going to see what it does. Put it right here. Okay, I'll wipe my brush out. And we'll put the other one on there. We'll see the difference on how, on how it turns the wood. This was, well, you can see it's got a brown cast to it. We'll see what it looks like. But it looks like that's going to weather it, too. Okay, I'm going to turn on the my heat gun and kind of dry it. I'm not seeing much difference on how it weathered it, though. Hmm. 
Hmm. I wonder if plain vinegar would do it. I don't know. Well, I'll keep this then because it when it, it, it did age my wood. It looks all right. I'll probably just pour that into this and I'll have plenty to last me for a while. But like I said, I don't know the difference of why this one turns so dark unless it was a real fine steel wool and I didn't know it. And this was your, I would say, I'm pretty sure it was probably the coarsest grade of steel wool that you could get. But it did have to set for almost two months to even get this color. This was about two weeks and it was already turning dark. Well, that's my update on the steel wool and vinegar. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. And until the next one, we'll see you later.